today I'm on my home trout lake and when I first moved to this region about five years ago I mean the trout fishing in this lake was phenomenal I mean I could fully expect to connect with 14 to 16 inch trout that were very healthy but starting a few years ago and around 2018 2019 things changed in this lake dramatically and the quality of this fishery declined the overall uh, condition factor of these fish declined they looked much skinnier they had a lot more parasites and they just didn't fight as well and i wanted to talk a little bit today about sort of wdfw's lackadaisical approach to fisheries management and how it's ruining perfectly good trout fisheries and actually reducing opportunity for anglers um, i mean it's just a double whammy they're basically shooting themselves in the foot Here's a very skinny looking fish here. Let's see if I can get him in the net. But it's a trout that's become so typical of this lake. I mean, they're just really unhealthy looking. It's so snaky and lots of parasites. They just don't look good. So today I'm gonna to be using um, a scientific measurement tool we call condition factor, which is a relationship of a fish's weight to its length. Um, and you plug that into an equation and you get this scale rating. So we refer to this uh, condition factor as K. And if their K factor is 1.6 and above, they're a very healthy, strong, robust fish. Anything from 1.4 to 1.6 is considered good. 1.2 to 1.4 is considered fair. And anything below 1.2 is a poor condition fish. So I'm gonna measure a bunch of different fish today. I have a rod at depth and a rod on the surface. I'm gonna be sampling fish from different parts of the lake at different depths. So I get a good capture of the population here and show you just what poor condition these fish are in. I'm also going to note parasites and fin damage and things like that and show it to you just to show you what kind of fish um, are in here now. And I'll throw out some old photos too of some of the really nice robust fish that I used to pull out of here regularly when I first moved here. All right, let's go ahead and get the condition factor on this fish. So I'm going to go ahead and measure them using a scale. I know that my net weighs 300 grams, so we'll go ahead and do this very quickly. 0.52 so I'm gonna take away three, so that's 220 grams is how much this fish weighs. Look at this fish, very skinny, missing its dorsal fin, just not very healthy looking, very snaky. Okay, we're gonna quickly measure it, uh, the length on the rod here, uh, and I'm gonna get convert that from inches to millimeters, and then I will give you the K factor of this fish. I'm gonna wet my hands, because I'm still gonna treat these fish like I would treat any other fish, even though they're very skinny and unhealthy looking. Okay, eat when it measures 11 and a half inches. 11 and a half inch fish that weighs 220 grams. I can tell you right now that's a poor conditioned fish already. Here he goes. I'm gonna reference my K factor chart. Okay, so he was 292 millimeters and he weighed 220 grams. His K factor is, it's actually below, it's off the chart below extremely poor in fact his k factor rating is probably going to be somewhere around 0 0.75 0 0.8 that is extremely poor condition fish that fish is starving to death what is going on with these fish i'll tell you what's going on there's fish So historically, this lake was a split season lake. When I first moved here, that was back like 2017. What a split season lake was is that during the summertime, um, it was a selective gear rolls lake like it is today. And you were only allowed to take one fish. And you had to use barbless hooks, no bait, right? So pressure on these fish during the summertime was light. But during the winter time, when the lake froze over, they allowed you to use bait through the ice and you could harvest up to five fish. So it switched to a more traditional uh, harvest trout fishery during the ice fishing season. Here's another extremely skinny trout, big head, little skinny body. Look at that big head, kind of skinny body. And look, there's a big old parasite right on the tail. See the copepod right there. Let's go in measure this fish's weight it's a 230 gram fish it's about 11 and a quarter inch all right so 
the 280 millimeters at around 230 grams it is again about 0 0.9 0 0.8 very poor condition fish again okay so what happened okay this lake traditionally was getting fairly low number of plants right because it was a split season lake right especially for the, the pressures it was getting it's very close to an urban area so it gets a lot of fishing pressure especially during ice fishing i would come up here and there would be lots of people up here ice fishing this lake and they're taking home their five trout limits because it was something fun to do during the winter time right get out of the house drive a few miles out of town drill some holes in the ice catch some trout just a great way to enjoy the outdoors and they're taking home their five fish they're pulling fish out of here but what happened is in 2018 wdfw our washington department of fish and wildlife agency came up with this idea this idea was that they were going to simplify the rules our rule book is 100 plus pages long and there's lots of rules specific rules and their idea of simplifying things was to try to make things more uniform across the year. So what they did is they eliminated the split season on this lake, okay? And they made it a selective gear rules lake year-round, and you're only allowed to take two fish. But because it's a selective gear rules lake, there's a lot of gear anglers that will not come up here and fish because they can't fish worms or power bait or anything like that. And... Uh, they're just not into the challenge of catching fish without bait and without barbs because they'll lose more fish, especially during the wintertime when you're ice fishing. It can be very difficult to get rainbow trout to commit to something that doesn't have bait on it and even more difficult to land them without barbs. And so fishing pressure on this lake dropped precipitously and harvest dropped precipitously because there's nobody up here. I was coming up here after the rules changed. There was nobody on the ice whatsoever. It was just completely empty up here and it blew my mind. I would have the lake to myself. There was no fish being removed from the lake. There's another fish. This one actually looks like it might be in a little bit better condition. A little fatter, but still small. Just not encountering those larger fish here anymore. That's 250 millimeters, 250 grams. Let's see what the chart says. 250 millimeters, 250 grams. There we go. That's a 1.6. That is actually a, a fair to excellent fish, right on that borderline, 1.6, right? So that fish did look healthy to me. It was nice, round, and robust, and the fins were in good shape. So there are some healthy fish in here. As I was saying, the number of fish being harvested out of here dropped off precipitously because of a change in management, right? So they changed the regulations. But what they did not do is they did not change the stocking of this lake at all. They were still putting the same number of fish in here. Now that doesn't really make sense. As somebody who's worked in the field of ecology for 20 plus years, um, when you change the amount of harvest pressure, then you should be changing the number of fish that you're putting into that lake to reflect that reduction in harvest pressure. Because now, during the winter time, there was nobody up here. Nobody's taken their five fish limits all winter long. And most of the type of people that come out here in the summertime and fish selective gear rules lakes are not taking home their two fish. Most of them are just coming out here doing catch and release, primarily fly anglers, okay? You don't see a lot of gear anglers out here in the summertime. But there was no change in management or stocking rates. In fact, as time has progressed since 2018, when I started noticing a lot smaller and smaller fish as time went on, they've been putting more and more fish in here. They've been increasing the number of catchable sized trout. So those are those fish in that half pound range. Um, not what I would consider trophy fish by any means and concurrently while they were doing that they're reducing the number of fry being put in the lake that is very counterintuitive to basic fish management because as i've pointed out in other videos fry are food for larger trout right you you can really pump up the size of trout in a lake by dumping lots of trout fry in there for the established trout. They will eat those fish, so it's a lot of protein that makes them grow really quickly. And you see that on fry planted lakes. 
those fish get extremely large they look extremely healthy uh, they don't have all the poor conditions that a lot of these other fish uh, do on some of these lakes where they only plant catchables so here they are increasing the number of fish that they're pumping into this lake the larger fish while it's already reducing the number of fish being harvested and they're reducing the number of fry put in the lake which also reduces the food for these established fish and what you're getting is fish starving to death there's not enough food these are not super productive lakes this is a narrow deep lake that has maybe one or two it really just has one large weed bed and then the rest of it is just a very narrow band along the shore where there's weeds can grow there's some vegetation that can help drive pump energy into this lake and create uh, food for these fish and this lake is not productive what's happening is these fish are starving to death the quality of this fishery is declining the overall health of these fish is declining because they don't have enough food so their immune systems are failing they're getting more parasites and it's really just ruined this fishery all because of that decision to change and simplify the rules and not to concurrently change the number of fish that they're planting into the lake they just kept doing what they had done in the past and then maybe in response to the people reporting very poor fishing up here they put more fish in the lake that doesn't make any sense I'm not surprised that they didn't change the stocking rates. I mean, given this agency's uh, history of just doing what they've always done. We have a term for this in fish and wildlife management. It's called institutional inertia. That's let's just keep doing the same thing that we've always done because that's what we've always done. But I think what upsets me more about it is that it, it clearly took away opportunity from people, right? Like the split season and the whole rule simplification thing moving away from that to me indicated that the agency wasn't really didn't really want to commit to management at these individual lakes blanket management is not good management good management is actually tinkering with the individual rules and regulations at each lake to reflect the local potential of that lake here's another fish very skinny i mean i would much rather see more complex rules than simpler rules. Yeah, it's 11, so it'll be a condition factor just below 1.6, so it'll be a fair conditioned fish. Let's go ahead and pull this fish in from down deep. Yeah, so rules simplification really actually resulted in a decline in participation on a lake. And it, it ultimately, WDFW's goal is to provide opportunity for anglers to me clearly rule simplification did the opposite of that and it also bound the hands of the biologist's ability to cater rules specifically to individual lakes that's not good management that's not good public policy that's terrible fish management that's terrible policy nope this guy does have parasites running down all behind his gills and he's got some parasites and fungus actually behind his uh anal fin there it's too bad okay 0.65 so this one weighs 350 grams so that's the heaviest fish of the day 12 inches that's 305 millimeters 350 grams let's check it he's right between he's right around 1.2 so he's right at that borderline fair to poor so he's on the lower end of the fair spectrum there's fish We can get this one in the boat and get him measured. Oh boy, he's covered in parasites like so many of them are today. Very unfortunate. That's just become a reality here with a lot of our trout. It's just the, the parasite loads are so heavy. You can see where those parasites stick out from the skin there. They get these little gelatinous spots on the side quite a bit of fin damage and scale damage on this fish let's go ahead and weigh it and measurement we'll get a k rating on this fish 0 0.58 kilograms minus 0 0.3 so it's 0.28 kilograms 12 inches all right so we'll do some metric conversions and get the k factor rating on that one so it's about 305 millimeters so i'm going to check my scale 
So at 305 millimeters, it has a K rating of 0 0.8, which is extremely poor, which I'm not surprised. That fish did look in very poor condition. There's fish. There's like a small one. Of course, they're all small in here now. All right. All right, we got this guy. I'll go ahead and get a quick weight on him. Keep him wet while I'm doing this. So, 0.54. That means he weighs 240 grams. All right, so he weighs, he's about 10 and a half inches. So, at 240 grams and 290, his condition factor is right around 1.1, which is still poor. Fish. All right, so what what should they do? I'm not going to be this person that's going to sit here and just criticize the actions of an agency without offering some kind of solution. I, I of all people, know the difficulty in managing fish and wildlife. It's a very challenging task because there are many factors beyond your control. But it's clear to me that overstocking is a major issue in this lake. And so if they want to just maintain the current rules, then they just need to reduce the number, the amount of stocking on this lake. There's just not enough pressure here to pull fish from this lake. This lake is essentially overpopulated with planted rainbow trout and other trout species, and it's destroying the fishery. So, simple thing, just start reducing the number of plants that you put in this lake, and that will help you, uh, and that will hopefully help increase the quality of the fishery in this lake. There's another really snaky rainbow when he pops off. I mean, they're hungry, right? I'll give them that. It's easy to catch fish here because they're starving and they want to eat something. Really dinky little pectoral fence. I got a fish on here, so I got to measure this guy fast. 310 grams, 12 inches. So 305 millimeters, 310 grams is right around 1.15 1.2 so again borderline poor to fair i better reel this guy in huh okay and i think you know one of the things that i think bugs me most about this whole rigid approach the whole rule simplification and the lack of change is it's just reflective of the agency's lack of adaptive management. And adaptive management has been around since I started undergrad school, you know, that was over 20 years ago. Adaptive management is the whole idea that you are constantly tinkering and experimenting with the management strategies to get a better result. And one of the most important things you can do in adaptive management is to monitor, to actually monitor what's going on with your fisheries which would involve doing what i'm like i'm doing out here today which is coming out and looking at the condition of trout in these local lakes and responding appropriately uh, by maybe reducing the number of fish you put in here or actually what would be more appropriate since wdfw's job is to provide opportunity to anglers is they should restore that split season because there's way less participation in this fishery now than there was when there was a split season and it seemed to benefit the fishery overall. You can maintain the same number of plants in the lake. More people got to go out and go fishing. It drives people to buy more licenses which provides more money for the department but they don't seem interested in doing that at all. It seems very counterintuitive to the ultimate goals of the agency. All right, let's see what this guy looks like. Same cookie cutter size. These are probably catchables that were planted in the spring. You just do not see the holdover fish because they starve to death. Okay, this one was caught down deep. So even the smaller fish are down deep. All right, so 250 millimeters. And let's see, so here he is. So he's right in the borderline. He's like 1.4. So that fish was right around that fair to good boundary. 1.4 to 1.2. So I'm very curious to see what your thoughts are 
do you prefer simpler rules or do you prefer more complex rules that cater to specific management of individual lakes? I mean, the whole reason they did the rule simplification was because they did it, they said they did it to make it easier for fishermen to understand the rules, but it does come at a cost and that is it makes it more challenging to cater specific regulations to specific lakes and also because they don't seem willing to change the stocking rates of these lakes. In fact, they seem to continue to overstock a number of these lakes that really seems to make it very challenging to produce healthy quality trout fisheries in this state. Another small trout. This one also has copepods on the tail. So there you go, another skinny, unhealthy looking fish with tattered fins. Copepods on the tail, not healthy. You can see those copepods right there on the tail. Oh, it's 170 grams. That is nothing. And it is a long, snaky fish. Look at the length of it here. He's 11 inches and 170 grams. That is a snake. So that's 280 millimeters. 170 grams, let's check it. That's a 0.84, extremely poor condition fish. Oh, one on the drop back. Well, so far today, I have only put one fish in the boat that was in good to excellent condition. Everything else was generally on the lower end of the fair to the very poor spectrum. And that just goes to show, what I wanted to illustrate is that, you know, a lot of people, when you go to a biologist in the agency and you tell them that the fishing is poor, they tend to discount a lot of what we have to say. And so I wanted to get, you know, video proof that these fish are in fact in very poor condition, that I'm using a rational, objective, scientific approach like I try to do with most of the things that I approach in life, most problems. And these fish are not healthy. This fishery is in poor shape and it is not providing great recreational opportunity. In fact, a lot of the decisions that the agency has made um, seem to be taking away that opportunity from people. Get this fish in the boat here. I'll be really curious to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Here we go. Another stubby fin fish. I'll see you next time out on the water. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.